Hello, it's me, but from the future. I was originally going to, in fact, I did record this after the main channel dishwasher version two video, but there was a thing I needed to try after I did a sanity check. So I had to delay this until now. If you got here without seeing the main channel video, there's a clicky thing. Uh, I don't know how necessary it is for you to view that video, especially if you saw the original dishwasher videos. The main point of this one is to go over something very interesting about my dishwasher, which I only discovered through testing these. Uh, and let's begin there. Thank you to whoever brought these to my attention. I don't remember who that was. Uh, and I think it was, it was either on Mastodon or Blue Sky, but somebody told me, hey, Finnish has a new pod, which they're claiming has cycle sync technology. And I was like, ooh, I need to test that. I bet it's malarkey, but uh, I wanted to test it. So I did. But also I wanted to make the revision of the video because there were certain things which I really didn't press on, which I needed to. Um, and I wasn't happy with the fact that the first video I didn't mention, don't listen to this telling you to fill the cups completely. Your, your water has to be super hard. There are just things that I wanted to cobble together into something more shareable, a one-stop shop with the important information there. And I thought, you know, I'll tamp down on my angst about the pods and I'll just go through tips and tricks that are agnostic to what detergent product you're using. But the thing is, I, I would not have noticed that these were on the market because when I need dishwasher detergent, I walk into the store and my eyes go right to the spot where I'm expecting this box to be. I'm not partial to Walmart by any means, but they're one of the last places where I can get dishwasher detergent that is powder in a box that I know is going to work because Cascade Complete, I have had at least two boxes of that stuff which left a residue despite using really small amounts of detergent. And I find that interesting, especially because those boxes are outright steering you to try and buy the more expensive product. So anyway, I won't go any further than what I've just alluded to. But I run into Walmart for this stuff because it works really well. I've never had a problem with it. And I would love to try other things like uh, Albertsons, their, uh, I'm saying Albertsons because here the store is Jewel. If you have an Albertsons store, whichever store has the essential everyday brand, they used to have a detergent in a box. I'm not sure if they still do though. I don't, I don't often shop there. Trader Joe's used to have detergent like this in a box, but now it's pods. So it's really just like, mm, it's really irritating to me. I like that this is just a paper box. I am concerned about things like packaging. I find it hilarious that this is, this product is saying that this is 80% plastic saved compared to buying them in a tub. They're, this is called a refill pack and they want you to buy this thing in this plastic bag to refill the plastic tub because that's less plastic. Whereas this has effectively no plastic other than whatever might be in the wax coating on the paper. And then it has this little metal spout. So anyway, that's kind of get, we're kind of getting off topic here, but I didn't know that these existed. And when Finnish, their Powerball tabs, I know many people believed that they dissolve at different rates, the different parts of the tab. I believed that because I'm pretty sure they ran some TV ads when I was a teenager, maybe, maybe even, they've been around a long time. I don't know how long ago this was, but I remember they showed, I think, the tab dissolving and the red ball hanging around for a while and that it would be used as a rinse aid. And my BS detector was always like, that, that doesn't seem right. So when a number of people brought that up in the comments of the first video, I thought, well, I need to test this. And that's part of, again, why I made the second video because there were so many things from the first video where people were saying, well, Consumer Reports says this, although we later found out that Consumer Reports is not using the pre-wash detergent. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I wanted to figure out. That's why the second video got made. But anyway, when I found out that these exist, I thought I definitely need to try this in the next condensed version. My hopes were very low because this is clearly a membrane product like the Cascade packs. It's not the compressed powder that it was before. And sure enough, they dissolve almost immediately. But when I ran the test, 
I ran it a little differently because um, I wanted to have a clock shown on the screen so you could see that only a few minutes have gone by. I think I waited six minutes. But when I first ran the test, I decided that I was going to open the door before it drained because I wanted to show the soapy water to show that indeed the detergent is in the water and there's no sign of the pod. So that's what I did. I opened it up. I moved the camera back in there so you could see. Then I put the camera back on the tripod and resumed the cycle. And this is when things got weird because I resumed the cycle and it was taking a very long time. At least 15 minutes elapsed after I resumed the cycle and it hadn't drained. That is very odd behavior. My dishwasher, the way I use it, it has always been fills with water, washes for 10 minutes, drains, fills again, then opens the detergent dispenser, which is very, you can notice it because it opens with a very loud clack. So if you're, you don't even need to be paying that much attention, the dishwasher will make a very loud noise, not very loud, but a very noticeable noise when it opens the dispenser. But I thought, well, I opened the door, I interrupted the cycle, it's probably got a weird cycle timer, I'll do it again. So I did the test again, and this time I thought, I'm gonna put the pack in the back right corner. Because the first time, I put the pack right by the uh, intake for the pump, and I thought, well, I'll try to give it a, some more time to maybe dissolve. So I put it in the back right corner, and this time I was going to wait to open it until it had drained to see was there anything left there. Again, well more than 10 minutes had elapsed and the dishwasher didn't drain. So I opened it and one thing that I noticed but I didn't really notice the uh, pertinence of this yet was the water seemed hot, like much hotter than it normally is. But then I also noticed this. Okay, I just figured something out. I didn't close the detergent dispenser on either of these test runs, and I think it knows it's open, so it didn't drain this water out right away. So I thought, oh, that's really interesting. The, it must have a switch on the dispenser door so it knows it wasn't closed, so it can help fight against user error in case somebody doesn't use the dispenser. That's what I thought was going on. So I thought, okay, let's do this again. So the next morning, because I was getting pretty tired, I decided to do this one more time and I closed the dispenser door. I put the thing where it's supposed to go and recorded. And yet again, the dishwasher did something weird. This time, at about 10 minutes, it opened the door, but it hadn't drained. That is so not normal. I've had this dishwasher for actually this is the second one I have had. Eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that it's the same one from the last videos, but the cabinets are different. That's because I've moved. But I liked that dishwasher so much that I bought it again. So it's the same model. I'm 95% sure it's the exact same model, but it was made a few years later. And also to the person who left the comment about the recall with the heating element, uh, this new one doesn't have that issue. The old one is somebody else's problem. Sorry. Um, but anyway, so I know this dishwasher very intimately. I've used it for at least five years. Every time I use it, it fills up, washes for 10 minutes, drains, fills again, and then you hear the clack of the detergent dispenser opening. It's very noticeable on this machine because it's the slidey door. So when it opens, you hear a pretty loud clack coming through. You can't miss it. Even if you're like watching TV, you're gonna hear it. So the fact that it clacked but hadn't drained was really messing with me. I was like, it has never done that. Why is it doing that? And then I remembered, because my dishwasher is as high-end as it is, this is, I mean, it's an expensive dishwasher. It was not on sale. I think it's like $1,300. It's easily triple or more the cost of an entry-level dishwasher. And one of its features is a turbidity sensor. So it's able to tell how dirty the water is and I was under the impression that the only time that sensor is used is when you use the pro wash cycle, which I typically don't use. I just use the normal cycle. I've used it a couple times, but it was, I didn't know if it made any difference. It might have shortened the cycle time, but I don't know. Normal always works, so that's just what I use. So it finally occurred to me that, oh, I'm running this test with it empty. 
So if it's using the turbidity sensor, it can tell Whoever loaded this dishwasher is one of those people who washes their dishes before they put it in the dishwasher. The water is hardly dirty at all. I'm just going to skip the first draining and open the detergent dispenser. And I was like, that's really fascinating that it, that it would do that and change up the programming like that. And I actually think that's really clever because if you have, there's so many people who have dishwashers but practically wash their dishes before they put them in the dishwasher, which is, Hilarious, but anyway, they've they've designed the programming to account for that. If the, if it discovers that there's hardly any stuff in there, it's just going to skip the pre-wash drain, open the detergent dispenser, and continue. That's probably why the second time I ran the test and I opened the door, it was hot in there, because it recognized that oh, I'm going to skip the pre-wash and just move on to the main wash. So the reason why I didn't record this until later is because I did realize. What if it's able to tell that there is detergent in the water? This didn't make a lot of sense to me because it still opened the detergent dispenser door, but I wanted to test one more time because with the old dishwasher, when I did the test with the finished Powerball tab, I was actually using it. If you remember from the footage, the reason why it looked kind of gross in there is because I was actually having it wash dishes. So it was doing, it was using the finished tab as the pre-wash detergent, then it drained that out and continued. So I wanted to do one more test where I actually used the dishwasher and put one of these in as the pre-wash detergent. And sure enough, after 10 minutes, it drained. So it was, it's not detecting detergent. I didn't think it would have any way to do that, but it is able to tell this water is not dirty. And so I'm not gonna drain it out because there's no point. Save that fill of water, just continue on to the wash program, which is really, really interesting. I, I thought maybe if it's detecting that there's detergent in there, it would, well, like I said, I thought initially it might have a switch to tell that the detergent dispenser door wasn't closed, which it might, but I have no way to confirm that because if, if it doesn't and it tried to open the dispenser door, I would have had to be listening very closely for the hum of the solenoid that actually opens that. And it's very quiet on that dishwasher. I don't normally notice it. I only hear the clack. So I'm not quite sure if it has that switch or not, but it doesn't matter because it behaves as though it doesn't have it. Um, it only drains the pre-wash water if it's dirty. And if it's dirty enough past some threshold, it drains it out refills and then opens the dispenser. So I don't know if that really changes anything about how how to use dishwashers. Certainly doesn't change anything. Like I only noticed this now after having that dishwasher model for such a long time. But I wanted to bring it up because it's interesting that they have that sensor and they are using that in a pretty clever way. Uh, it does make me wonder what they do if the sensor fails, what its um, fallback strategy is there. Like I said, I, I didn't think it was using that sensor at all unless you used the pro wash setting, uh, but it is. It must be because it didn't drain three times in a row when the machine was empty, but it drained on the fourth time when there was actually dirty dishes in it and the pre-wash water got dirty. So yeah, that's really all this video was about to show you that modern dishwashers, at least high-end dishwashers, they're more, they're smarter about what they're doing than I thought. Uh, and kudos to the designers of them. I don't know at all how prevalent that might be. And, you know, you can get a basic dishwasher for about 350 bucks and they're going to be loud, uh, but they're going to work. And I have very little doubt that if you bought like the entry-level Frigidaire dishwasher, other than it being kind of loud, it's probably gonna wash your dishes just fine. As I said in both videos, I have never used a dishwasher that didn't work well. There is, however, one kind of exception. When I was in high school, my parents had a dishwasher briefly that did seem to have problems, but the problems were mainly residue buildup. And if I were thinking back then, I don't believe they or I tried a dishwasher cleaning product uh, to try and get rid of that residue. And also, 
that was a very early gel product that seemed to be causing that residue. With that machine, I don't remember if it was Cascade or something, but it was a gel that it just didn't seem to dissolve right in the water. Um, so it may have been a defective detergent bottle that ended up ruining that dishwasher and probably it could have been fixed if um, I had thought to try deep cleaning it, but I, it's been so long that I don't remember the details, but I believe there was like a problem, a known problem with that dishwasher where it was recalled for some reason. So they ended up just getting rid of it. And other than that one dishwasher, literally, which to reiterate, it washed dishes okay. It's just, it seemed to be building up with gunk in there, but also I believe it had a filter. No, I know it had a filter because I tried cleaning that a number of times, but it seemed to always just be building up gunk. So that one is the only questionable dishwasher that I've ever used in my life. The whole rest of the time, when I lived in Florida, had a very, very cheap one in my apartment there. It had, it still had a mechanical timer. And in fact, I realized it was when the mechanical timer passed a certain point, then it mechanically opened the detergent dispenser, which was clever. And I'm sure that's how they worked for a long time, but that one worked fine. And again, I was using, if not this exact product, something very much like it. I've uh, stayed in different various places on vacation where like say it's a, a nice timeshare rental type deal where there's a dishwasher in the room, have used it, always seems to work fine. And actually there, and this is very funny, oftentimes the product that they have left behind is a finished powder, but it's also branded as Ecolab because Ecolab, fun fact, basically the entire hospitality industry uses Ecolab chemicals. And somehow a brand deal happened where there's Finnish brand little pouches of powder that also say Ecolab. So that's fun. But anyway, they also have worked great. I've used all sorts of dishwashers from low end to mid range to very high end now, and they've all worked really well. And the only thing that I've consistently done is use cheap powder, put it in both spots it asks me to put it, and run the hot water tap before I start the dishwasher. Which reminds me, so there was a conversation that I had online somewhere, it was quite a while ago, it might've even been Twitter, where somebody mentioned that they used to live in an apartment that had some whatever dishwasher, and then they moved to a house which had the exact same dishwasher, and they realized after they moved that their, the dishwasher in their house didn't work very well, which was puzzling to them because the one in their apartment building worked just fine. And the reason why it worked just fine in their apartment building I would imagine is because in most apartment buildings, there's a hot water recirculation pump. So when you open the tap, you get hot water like that. But when they moved into their house, which the kitchen sink was not close to the water heater, there's probably about a half gallon of cold water, at least in the pipes between their water heater and kitchen. And you gotta purge that or else the dishwasher will not fill with hot water. So I don't remember how this came up, but it was like a light bulb moment for them that oh, that's why it doesn't work as well in the house because it's filling up with cold water. And by the way, if you wanna know what a hot water recirculation pump is, so if you've got a big building like a hotel or an apartment building, usually the water heating is still centralized. I don't wanna say usually, but the way that you get hot water right away is the hot water pipes are an insulated loop and there's a pump which is forcing that water through this loop and then back to the water heater. And that means that the water pipes always have hot water in them, no matter where you are in the building. If that pump breaks, which one day it will, then you're going to discover that whoever's far from the water heater in the building, it might take like 10 minutes for them to get hot water if they're the first person to use it during the day. But that's how that works. So this person in their apartment building, I used to live in a condo, which was like this. It was one of, one of the nicest things about that condo building was that Every tap was hot instantly, but most houses don't have a recirculation pump. You just have to purge that water. So for them, that was an explanation as to why the same model of dishwasher didn't seem to work that well in their new house. And if, if you are watching this video, please comment down below if you're the person I'm talking about and maybe other people have a similar story. And one thing that I wanna say is I don't know how I was told to do that. I don't remember who explained that this is something you need to do, but my parents had been doing it my whole life. And I remember I was talking to my mom about this and there's a radio 
personality, Lou Manfredini, here in the Chicago area. And he would do like a home improvement show on WGN. And he mentioned someone was asking about their dishwasher. He asked them, are you running the water hot? And she said, no. And he's like, you have to do that. So like, this is a thing that is knowledge, but it seems like one of those things that somebody has to tell you or else you need to really nerd out on how do dishwashers work. Because like, I wouldn't have known that the Frigidaire dishwasher that I cut the hole in and did the demos with doesn't run its heating element during the pre-wash until I hooked a plug up to the thing and plugged it into a kilowatt. Like, there's a lot of, the dishwasher seems like a mystery box. It's just doing what it does and then your dishes are clean. But if you understand that in North America, I should say the US and Canada, I really don't know what the Mexican dishwasher market might look like or other countries on this continent, but in the US and Canada, your dishwasher wants hot water. And if it doesn't get hot water, it's going to really suffer. So, but anyway, what I was getting at was, I don't know how I learned that, but my parents were doing it ever since I was a little kid. It's just a habit that I picked up on. And I wonder if it might be down to, like my grandparents, they had a portable dishwasher, which is, it's on wheels and you just bring it close to the kitchen sink and you hook it up with an adapter. And I imagine the instructions on those are very clear that you run the water till it's hot and then switch the little thing over to connect to the dishwasher. But I don't know. I don't know how that got started, but I do know it's a thing that a lot of people don't know they need to do. And that's why I really stressed it on this version of the video. But anyway, I think at this point I'm talking in circles. So that's really what this was about. Some fancy dishwashers have sensors that can tell how dirty the water is. And that's really clever, but also the double-edged nature of it is it might really screw with how it's running the program. It's, it's harder to give advice when the machine might be doing something smart where it might change things up. But I do believe given that my high-end dishwasher, it works the same as every other dishwasher I've ever used. It doesn't have a filter. There's nothing to clean like that. It's just put detergent in the dispenser and put some on top for the pre-wash and it works excellently. Um, also, I will just say, if anybody's in the market for a dishwasher, this is not an endorsement of that KitchenAid dishwasher, but it is a really great dishwasher and I love it a lot. So you might wanna look into it, but the reason why I'm putting a big but on it is I heard somebody say that the top control model, which is what I have, is more reliable than the front control model because the front control one often gets moisture on the control board. So if you're interested in that, you probably want the top control model. But also here's another thing. Another reason why I don't use the heated dry option is because that's when it a lot of steam comes out of the machine and that's when the control board is most prone to getting wet. At least I believe. I don't know if there's any science behind that. But that's also why I don't use the heated dry option because quite honestly, it just doesn't seem like it's worth it. It seems risky to the items you put in there. It seems like it may wear the dishwasher out more. Uh, yeah, I don't... It, and the fact that it takes like 20 minutes for the heated dry to even happen, I don't even think it's a time saver. Cause you, if you open the dishwasher when it's done, you're gonna get a big cloud of steam coming at you because the final rinse water is very hot. And so everything that's in there is very hot. And if you just pull out the bottom rack and let it sit in the air, it's all going to evaporate really fast. So that's why I've said in the video, you might try turning that off. It doesn't, it's never really seemed to make a difference for me. And when I hear about the new things that like Bosch is doing where it pops the door open automatically, I mean, to be honest, that's pretty much what I'm doing. So the heated dry option on an American dishwasher, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's worth it. You might try turning it off. Uh, speaking of turning it off, I'm gonna turn this video off now. Bye.